Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. In films and on stage, Peter Lawford was the essence of wit and charm, a handsome actor who exuded sophistication and sex appeal. In real life, he could be similarly witty, charming and sexy, but beneath the glossy surface lurked a troubled soul bedeviled by insecurity and a host of other demons. He was a member of two infamous groups, the Kennedy Clan and the Rat Pack. Need we say more? Why was Peter Lawford the man who kept the secrets in Hollywood? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The Secret Life of Peter Lawford As the brother-in-law to JFK and a member of the Rat Pack, Peter Lawford was one of America's most acclaimed movie stars. He led an extraordinary life. His story is the always candid, sometimes shocking unveiling of the most intriguing show business personalities and significant political events of our time. At age 25, Lawford was one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood and a symbol of glamour and romance. By the end of his life, he was heavily addicted to drugs, alcohol, prostitutes and kinky sex, and so broke that he didn't think twice about selling out a friend to make a buck. When Elizabeth Taylor called to confide that she had checked into the Betty Ford Centre, Lawford agreed to join his long-time pal in the rehab programme, then secretly tipped off a supermarket tabloid as to Taylor's whereabouts and pocketed a reported $15,000 for the juicy tidbit. You may remember that Peter Lawford was a suave and handsome British movie star, but off the top of your head can you name any movie he was in other than Ocean's Eleven? In the years just before he joined the Rat Pack, however, his career had stalled. He actually made a lot of movies, and some of them were pretty good. His best titles include Little Women, Advise and Consent, Exodus, and It Should Happen to You. However, he was merely a competent supporting actor, and not truly a leading man in most of these. That's not to say that Peter Lawford was a bad actor, but we believe that if it weren't for his involvement in the Rat Pack and his connection to John F. Kennedy, he would be a pretty obscure figure in the history of American film. It didn't start off well and it didn't end well. It was more or less a messed up life from start to finish and to his credit he probably would have agreed. He made it to the extent that he did as an MGM contract player because the big name actors were off fighting the war. He didn't appear to take his career any more seriously than he did anything else. He was a good-looking, had some aristocracy in his bones, and lived as a rich playboy, whenever he could. After his glory years with the Kennedys came to a sorry end, he hit the skids. Born in London in 1923 to an ambivalent mother, Lawford led a nomadic life as a child. His parents were married to other people at the time of his birth. They divorced their spouses shortly after Peter's birth and married one another. There was that touch of aristocracy in his background, but not as much or as current or as important as the Lawfords would have others believe. Peter was conceived with an altruistic goal in mind, to let Lieutenant General Sir Sidney Lawford to marry his mother May, and she would be Lady Lawford rather than May Aylan. She never wanted Peter, he was an awful accident, even though she had never conceived before and must have known how to prevent pregnancy with her first husband. May even went to the extent of putting a gun in her mouth during childbirth, due to the pain Peter was causing her. Peter was born breech with the umbilical cord around his neck and an undeveloped left arm. He was left to nurse Hemming for the first year of his life, who strapped his good arm down occasionally to force him to use his left, and as a result he grew up ambidextrous. May would have preferred a girl dressing him in girls' clothes privately until he was ten, his mother told him early on that he was not wanted, but she did more than tell, she showed too. She put him down, called him names, told him he better well learn how to take care of himself with his limited abilities. He grew up feeling less than, there was a problem of feeling little self-worth, and that little boy looked in the mirror. He liked what he saw, and he smiled, and that handsome face simply illuminated. Yes, that would be his ticket to ride, and because those looks and that engaging manner would open doors, the handsome young lad just stopped trying to improve himself. There was nothing more to do. Or maybe toss the hair, wear the best clothes, and out the door. 
The scandal of his parents' relationship caused the family to move to Paris, where young Peter spent much of his childhood. It was not a good time there either, at least for the youngster. He cut his arm up pretty badly going through a glass door, and it would never be the same, although the nerve damage that it caused remained undetectable in his films. He was molested at least three times as a child while living in France, first by a friend of the family, a man, and was never comfortable talking about the incident. All he would say was that a pillow had been pushed over his face to silence him, and that the experience traumatised him. His first sexual encounter at ten was with his 35-year-old German governess. This was no isolated experience, as several of his nannies had taken sexual advantage of him around the age of ten. Peter resented his mother for leaving him with these women, but didn't know what to think of it at that age. He loved and hated her at the same time. None of the episodes went nearly as far as they could have, but Peter was badly shaken and claimed he was greatly affected by them his whole life. Insulated, withdrawn young Peter was shunned by most kids his age, and he sought closeness wherever he could find it. His unconventional upbringing created a number of personality confusions. The added element of his mum's emotional instability left him with virtually no defences. The woman careered between smothering him as if he was a doll, and at other times she ignored him. 1937 they were in France at an exclusive spa hotel. He developed a passion for tennis. He returned to the bungalow to find that the maid had latched the door, so he slammed into it, with his right arm smashing through one of the panes, and instinctively he pulled it back out, which caused the damage. A jagged shard of glass sliced through his upper arm, slit muscles, tendons, and severed an artery. He ran fifty yards to the lobby where he collapsed. He lost two pints of blood. Couldn't you have done this another night, Peter? You knew I was dining out tonight. He was told there was no way to save his arm, that gangrene would surely set in, and the only solution was to amputate at the shoulder. His mother refused. Once the wound healed, the arm remained limp, and his hand had curled into a half-fist like a claw, with the effort to open it too painful. Lawford fell into a deep depression. The doctor showed him exercises to do to regain use, resulting in Peter having 75% usage of his arm. Peter kept his hand in his pocket almost all the time, and dreaded shaking hands. His doctor recommended they move to a sunnier place, as the cool, damp weather caused pain, so the Lawfords moved to L.A. After moving to Hollywood in 1941 with his alternately uncaring and over-possessive mother, he signed with MGM and launched his American film career. In 1938 he was noticed by an agent in Los Angeles, who thought he had the good looks to work in movies. He had some bit parts in a few, but then the Lawfords somehow found themselves stranded in Florida at the start of the war. Peter scrimped and saved from some odd jobs to make enough to return to Los Angeles. He decided to pursue that film career after all. Soon May would be there as well. He parked cars at Carl Brulenfeld's lot in Palm Beach, and parked Joe Kennedy's car. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, Lucille Ryman, head of MGM Talent, had orders to sign up any man who was six foot and four F. Peter's arm disqualified him from military service. May handed down to Peter an unfortunate Victorian legacy, the conviction that sex was dirty and something to be got over with as quickly as possible. Lawford had a strong sex drive, but rarely enjoyed the act in any truly romantic sense. To him it was purely a physical release, and due to his rejection from Lana Turner in his early days at MGM, it made it difficult for him to give himself emotionally again. Peter's painful break-up with Lana Turner changed the way he treated women. After that he started to just drop women when he was finished with them. He could be heartless. It was Lana that taught him that. It was due to his reluctance to become emotionally involved that Peter preferred prostitutes, which brought him close to scandal many times. His mother was a terrible snob, a heavy drinker, an obnoxious name-dropper, and in general not a very nice person. She was not a good mother, never claimed to be, never wanted to be. She hated babies and never warmed to any children. She picked on Peter, called him horrible names, and paid little attention to him until he became a movie star. Then she still picked on him and called him names, but she paid a whole lot more attention. She may not have cared for him, but he hated her. 
He was insecure with little self-esteem as a child, and it would always be lurking until his final day. Lawford dated a number of actresses, most of whom found a disappointing lover. He would continue to compulsively seek out young women throughout his life. Peter was in hot water with Sinatra over a studio-staged lunch with Frank's one true love, Ava Gardner, that resulted in a photograph appearing in newspapers. Frank cut all ties with Peter. Why did Peter Lawford become a member of the Rat Pack? He was a middling movie actor at best. The answer is that Peter Lawford had married John F. Kennedy's sister, Patricia. Peter began seeing Pat Kennedy, sister of President Candidate John. The first thing Joe Kennedy, father of Pat, said to Peter was, If there's anything I'd hate more for a son-in-law than an actor is a British actor. Lawford knew his place. His association with Sinatra, Martin and Davis made him seem much more prominent in Hollywood than he actually was. Sinatra never let him forget that either. His nickname became Brother in Lawford. Kennedy and the Sinatra clan genuinely enjoyed each other's company. However, they also used each other to increase their visibility and glamour. As a result, Lawford became a key member as he connected JFK to the Hollywood community. Peter married Pat Kennedy in 1954, in one of the society weddings of the year. Peter didn't like kids and even stayed at a different home to Pat when she was pregnant with their first child, Chris, and remained an absentia father for the rest of his life. He had alliances while Pat was expecting, but nothing serious with the Kennedys around, as he was petrified of the Kennedy family and felt inadequate around them because he wasn't as educated as they were. It was a constant struggle for Peter to keep his head above water when concerning the Kennedys. His marriage to Pat Kennedy foundered because of his infidelities and the fact that he was unable to fit in with the Kennedy clan. Ironically, it was Kennedy who inadvertently brought about the end of Lawford's friendship with another man he greatly admired, Frank Sinatra, when JFK changed his mind about staying at the singer's home during a trip to California. Sinatra, who had installed a helicopter pad in anticipation of the President's arrival, blamed the hapless Lawford for the disappointment and shunned him ever after. The tortured actor syndrome, of course, is a time-worn tale. Nobody forced Lawford to abuse drugs and alcohol, but his insecurities were deep-rooted. Peter never had a formal education. All his young life he was taught by tutors. His education included ballet and tennis lessons. When he didn't fare so well with the curriculum his mother had selected for him, she switched things to include dramatics. In his young adult life, he liked to brag about what a glorious upbringing he had and how educated he was, but those closest to him knew better. In 1958, Peter was offered the role of James Bond. The studio wanted a handsome swan Englishman with an eye for beautiful women, a love of gadgetry and a distaste for criminals. It seemed like the right decision at the time, but in retrospect it was the worst of Peter's professional mishaps, turning down the role. Peter Lawford may be the least well-known member of the Frank Sinatra Rat Pack. Lawford is sometimes called the man who kept the secrets because of his clandestine efforts to connect his brother-in-law, John F. Kennedy, and Marilyn Monroe, and his work as a liaison between Kennedy. Some historians even speculate about Peter Lawford's purported involvement in the death of Marilyn Monroe. Lawford also arranged trysts for JFK with other Hollywood beauties. The connections made by Peter Lawford led to the powerful Sinatra endorsing, raising money and campaigning for Senator Kennedy as he ran for president. It was through Lawford that many members of the entertainment community gained access to Kennedy. Lawford rubbed elbows with mobsters and movie stars and managed clandestine meetings between Marilyn Monroe and JFK. We can only speculate about how many secrets he kept. Gossip mongers have published scurrilous accounts of Lawford arranging orgies for Sinatra, Monroe and JFK. In 1962, Peter Lawford arranged for President Kennedy to stay at Frank Sinatra's home in Palm Springs. Sinatra made extensive preparations for this singular honour. He even had a helipad built just for JFK. At the last moment, Robert Kennedy convinced his brother not to stay with Sinatra. The public reason was a question of security. The real reason was RFK's deep concern over Sinatra's ties to Giancana and the Mafia. 
he had Lawford break the news to a bitter and humiliated Sinatra. JFK wound up staying at the home of long-time Republican Bing Crosby. Sinatra had Lawford's role written out of the next Rat Pack movies. He never spoke to Lawford again. Lawford died in 1984 at the age of 61 of kidney and liver failure. Initially his ashes were entombed in the same cemetery as Marilyn Monroe's, but the burial bills were never paid and the mortuary threatened to evict the remains. Finally Lawford's fourth wife scattered his ashes into the Pacific Ocean. The National Enquirer provided the boat in exchange for the scoop. If you liked this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here and if you want to support my work please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Peter Lawford? It is a tragic story of a handsome sophisticated Englishman who became a Bobby Sox idol, a lover of Ava Gardner and Lana Turner, a Kennedy in-law, a member of Sinatra's Rat Pack and an intimate confidant of Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor.